Bless him, Lord. I'd like to try to read tonight. Bless him, Lord. In the book of Ecclesiastes in the third chapter. I woke up this morning, and early this morning, before I really needed to get up and start to get ready for church. And got down and tried to pray and got my Bible and was trying to read and thought well you know just my carnal mind the thought crossed my mind well you don't have to read a whole lot you don't have to go anywhere today you're just going to your own church you know you're you're going to listen to somebody else today and I thought that's not you know God works he, he didn't say to be prepared when I had been called or when someone had asked me, he said be prepared all the time. Amen. And I was trying to read, and trying to get, trying to get my heart settled on something. I couldn't, I just couldn't get anywhere today. And I got down to pray, and mom and dad already left to go to our church and just be there. And got down to pray and said, Lord, I don't have nothing. Lord, I don't want to go in. But, and as I was standing up, this, this chapter came to my mind, and I didn't know where I'd go with it. I still don't know exactly how we're going to go with it. But Lord, this is what was laid on my heart. So in the ninth verse of the third chapter of the of Ecclesiastes, it says, What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it that men should fear before him. That's where the Lord would guide and read tonight. Bless him, Lord. As I was trying to read through this today, I started there in the ninth verse. And the, the thought that came to me, Bless him. in the ninth verse when it says, What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? Based on, you know, the historical records and whatnot, Ecclesiastes was pinned down by, by Solomon. Yeah. If, you, if you think back to the book of 1 Kings, in the third chapter, Solomon was blessed by God. He asked yeah. for wisdom, and God right, gave, right. Him, gave him more riches than any Bless man right. sent before or since. Right. He was the richest man to ever walk this world and the wisest. Yeah. But here he's saying, what profit? hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth. You know, all the work he ever did, and he had more riches than any person that's ever walked the earth before or since. And he says, what good is it? What good is yeah. all the riches that God gave me? It's, it profiteth nothing. Yeah, that's him, Lord. And that's the way my life is. I can, I can go work and I can try to make money. I can do whatever. Yeah. If... I make five dollars, or if I make five hundred dollars, it won't matter. Yeah. I have to. We have to work. We have to try to yeah. provide a living for ourselves. We have to. We have to live on this side. And we have to work to try to make that living. I mean, that's how. That's yeah. how God instituted it. He said we would work by the sweat of our brow. Amen. Yeah. But what does our labor profit us? Yeah. Blessing, Lord. Beyond, beyond just providing us a, a, a living, a sustenance yeah. to live. Blessing, Lord. And as we read on down through this, it really struck me from the, the ninth verse down to the fourteenth verse. And the ninth verse, he's talking about what man can do. Yeah. And what's what good is it that when man tries to do something? And then in the fourteenth verse, he says, "I know." That whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Amen. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it, that men should fear before Him. Yeah. You know, we uh, in the Old Testament times we had the tribe. Well, not we. 
we were excluded. We weren't yeah. we weren't part of the children of Israel. We were the Gentile people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We weren't counted in in that number. We couldn't reach God. But the the people at the time had to take a lamb, and they had to take it to a man. Yeah. yeah. And that Praise lamb had Lord. to be sacrificed by their priest. If you know, their high priest had to take yeah. those those offerings and sacrifices and make Praise offerings Lord. to God. But what prophet had those earthly sacrifices? Yeah. We we took something that the the Bible told us to take it, and if we whatever we sacrificed had to be without spot, without blemish. Yeah. But yet the greatest sacrifice in the Old Testament you can ever read of, it was only good for a certain amount That's of time. Right. That's right. right when you when you went right there. the way I am, when I walk out that door, if I had to sacrifice a lamb every time I sin, I wouldn't get out the door before I'd have to come back in and sacrifice another yeah. lamb. It, it would profit me nothing. That's right. I would have to come in and go out constantly trying to make sacrifices. Then the 14th verse, he says that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. The Lord, he gave us a lamb, he gave us a sacrifice, and by his hand, his son was killed and sacrificed yes. as a remission for our sins. That's right. And this, this verse, when it says, shall be forever. You know, he came to me and he, he sacrificed his lamb and he put it in my heart. He saved me. And I was an eight-year-old little boy and I've still got it. Amen. I haven't had to have another sacrifice. Amen. And for 2,000 years, some odd years, however, exactly, that since the Lord rose from the grave, we haven't had to have another sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Good. Right. Thank you, know, you Lord. It was good enough 2,000 years ago yeah. to save, and it was good enough 10 years ago when I was saved, and it's good enough today. Amen. This church has a burden for some lost people. Yeah. I can tell by the way Amen. you request your prayers for them. Bless you, we got to have that burden. Amen. But when we try to talk to them or we try to lead them here, we try to get them down to this altar, try to get them to pray, what's that going to profit us? Yeah. But when the Spirit comes by and the Spirit yeah. leads yeah. into that, that trouble tonight, if you're, you've got lost people here this morning, you, if they were here tonight and the Spirit came by, yeah. he could trouble them tonight just like he did this morning. Amen. 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 But we can't do that in ourselves. Right. If I, the best I can do every single day I can try to live the cleanest life I, yeah. that I possibly can, and I can't do good enough to, to be able to do anything for anybody else that would profit them anything. I can try, I can come to your house, and I can try to help you do something, and yeah. we might get the problem fixed, but here in a little while, something else is going to break, That's right. and you're going to need something else fixed, and I can replace... I can replace a part on my truck, and yeah. six months from now, a year from now, that part's going to break again. I'll just right. have to replace it again. Yeah. It doesn't last. But when when God comes by and He troubles your people, it'll last. It'll yeah. stick with them. Yeah. Yes, you know, if you if you came in and you were troubled this morning, you went out that door, you didn't leave, and your that burden just go away. You know, we can't. If you came in this morning, you were worried and burdened about some lost soul. You left. And you left with that burden. Bless him, Lord. It'll stick with you. Yes. You know, I have to I have to go to my house and I have to pray at my house just like I do here. Yes. If we don't if we're only praying right. for our lost Amen. people while we're here, then we don't have a, a burden for Amen. them like we ought to. Amen. But we have to get to a point where we can just take that burden. And when we get when we get that burden on us, the Lord said he wouldn't put on us more than we That's can bear. Right. But right. when we get that burden, and we, that burden starts to get heavy, and we know we can't do anything, you know what, that we get that weight on us, we're trying to go forward. And, yeah. God, we just got so much weight on us that we just can't do nothing. That we get willing, we get ready, yes. and we can just give that burden to the Lord. Hey, and the Lord takes that burden, <laughs> something can happen with it, yeah. and it can profit something in our lives. And in the lost souls' lives, you know, 
I got lost in my family just like everybody else, and I want to see them saved. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe that when I come burdened, and I'll give that burden to the Lord, He'll move yeah. on it. Amen. I have to have faith in that. Yeah. If I if I came and I tried to pray for my lost people and I didn't believe that God could save them, yeah. it wouldn't do them any right. good. Amen. Wouldn't do them any good to pray. Right. But I believe right when I come and pray, and I I put forth the effort. You know, God doesn't require a whole lot of us. You know, compared to, to what God can do, we can't do much of anything. Yeah. But if we'll just come with a burden, we'll just give that burden. Yeah. Just give it up. You know, when Solomon died, someone else got all those riches. Yeah. Yeah. But, Bless him, Lord. What, Bless him, Lord. If whatever I have, when I leave this world, someone else can take it. Yeah. yeah. Whatever it is, it don't matter. It's not going to profit me anything. That's right. Tom. Once I'm gone, the only thing that's going to make a difference is what God did for me. Yeah. And that salvation that I have in my heart. So when Solomon here says, that whatsoever God doeth, it should be forever. And we'll turn our burden over to Him. It's not always easy to give up a burden, you know. That's it, brother. I want to I want to hold on to it sometimes. You know, my lost people like got family and I wanna I wanna just be able to go up to them every day of the week and say, You yeah. come to church and yeah. when are you gonna get saved? But it's not for me to say when they're gonna get saved anyways. And when I when I go up to somebody and I try to talk to them for myself, it's not gonna do any good anyways. But if I wait on the Lord hey, and I'll give the Lord that burden yeah. When he comes by and he talks yes. to them and he troubles their heart, then we can see something to gain yeah. from it. That's right. I don't. Yeah. In myself, I don't even know how to give up the burden. Yeah. I can't. I can't do anything in myself. Yeah. I can't carry the burden on my own, and I don't know. I don't know how to take a burden. I don't know how to carry a burden. I don't know how to give up a burden. Bless him, Lord. Nothing I, nothing I do will prosper. Bless him, Lord. And it won't matter. Anything I try to do, it'll come to naught. Yeah. But if I, let, if, I, if I let the Lord come by, let him give me a burden. Yes. And then I'll give that burden back to him. Yes. And he can move. He can bless us. Yes. He can bless our lost people. He can touch them. We have to trust that it's going to be God's work and what God does. Or anything taken from it. And God doeth it that men should fear before Him. And God, when God moves on your people, there'll be a fear. Amen. I can't put that fear in You know, we can try to do all kinds of things and try to tell them what what hell's going to be like and you know, if we all if we saw exactly what hell was going to be like, we would all come and, and be saved. Yes. But I can't I can't express to my lost people what hell's going to be like. I can't tell them how bad it's going to be. And this this earthly this earthly language and there's not enough words in our dictionary to explain what what hell's going to be like. And just the same way as there is heaven, we can't explain. We can't explain the power of God. Right. We can't explain what He can do. We can't explain what it's going to be like one day. But I thank the Lord that one day He came by yeah, and He yeah, got a burden. Yeah, you know, yeah, somebody yeah. prayed for me. I don't know who it was. Yeah. You know, I hadn't been troubled before, but when I came in that Sunday morning, somebody was praying for me. And they gave that burden to the Lord and they said, Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I'm ready. Yeah. Tried to carry the burden. I've Bless tried to carry it, and now I'm giving it to you. Yeah. You move on it when you're ready. Amen. Thanks and it God. was that Sunday morning that he was ready to move on that burden. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Somebody carried a burden for me. I've got to carry a burden for somebody else. 
but I can't carry the burden. I've got to give it to the Lord. Let the Lord move in His time. When, when God moves, it'll prosper. When I try to do it, it'll just fail, it'll fall.
It's hard for this flesh to want. We don't want to wait on anything. We get mad if the drive through is running behind. But God don't work on our time. Amen. We have to trust the Lord. Amen. When, when He puts something on our heart, all we can do is give it back to Him. Yeah. That's it. We can't do anything with it. We can't move on it. We just have to trust God and let God work. Nowhere else. When the, when the Lord's done, I just gotta be finished. I can't go any farther. Come on. Come on, Sergeant. Sergeant, the way you see fit. God bless